Welcome back all of you DIYers. Today I'm going to show you how to fix an outlet or a GFI circuit that's not working. Stick around. So the first thing you're going to want to do is check your main breaker panel for any circuits that have been tripped. And a quick little hint is to use a pair of vice grips to hold the door up because let's face it, it's no fun when this thing comes down on top of you. It's, it's not any fun at all. So just kind of check your breaker panel here. Um, you're going to notice you'll have a, a main breaker. Uh, in this case, it's a 125 amp breaker that you can see here. And it, you're going to want to just kind of scan down and you're looking for anything marked um, like GFI or bedroom circuit or bathroom circuit, whatever room it is that's not working is what you're going to want to look for. Now we don't have any breakers that are tripped and the panel's not marked to tell us what circuit is that we're having problems with. So we're going to remove the outlet carefully because it's, there is a chance that the wire has come out of the outlet and it could be live inside that box still. So proceed with caution. On the back of a GFI, you are going to want to mark your wires somehow and make sure that you know which ones came out of which side because a GFI, your wires that are coming from your main power source and the wires going to the rest of your outlets do have to go in a very specific spot or nothing is going to work. For the next step, we're going to use an electrical tester that will tell us if we have electricity in the box and you just touch it to each of the wires in there and the green light will turn red if there's an indication of any electricity in there, even a small amount. This next tool is an absolute must have for tracing wires and they're inexpensive. That's the great part. You can buy one of these and trace out your own electrical problems for much cheaper than you can hire somebody to come in and do it for you. I've literally made thousands of dollars as a handyman with this one tool and they're easy to use. Just connect your black wire to the black one and your red wire to the white wire. And then you've got this toner here. Now this toner is pretty awesome. If you flip the switch in one direction, it'll tell you if you have a short and you flip it to the other direction for tracing out wires. Now you've got this little gizmo here that's gonna make a pretty funny sound, as you can hear. And what's cool is you can trace this now through the wall. And you can also trace it through your ceilings or through thick insulation in an attic. Now that I've traced it back towards my panel, I'm going to go ahead and take out the cover. And you're going to want to be careful with this because I have seen some panels where when you're taking this off, it can fall inside and it can sometimes hit both of your 120 volt wires coming in. And that'll make some sparks that'll really wake you up. Now we're going to pause here for a second because in this next section I really want you to listen to the tone difference between when I touch a wire that has electricity going through it versus when I touch the wire that has my toner hooked up to the other side. Once you've found the wire that your toner is connected to, you can use your electrical tester again to make sure that you have the correct wire. And go ahead and flip that breaker to the off position for the next part. Now you can disconnect your tester so that you don't blow it up if there is electricity going through it. And flip your breaker back on. And check for power once again. Sometimes a breaker can trip but not have any physical signs on the outside. So if you have power there, like we do in this case, then go back in and double check your wires inside. And we have power. Now we know for sure which one our power comes in on. You're gonna to wanna to make sure to remember that. Uh, flip your breaker back off and double check just to make sure that nothing is live. And then we can go ahead and cut the ends of these wires off. I like to uh, Restrip the wire it, when I'm putting new GFIs on uh, just because sometimes the new ones need to be straight instead of um, twisted around a uh, screw. So in this case, um, this GFI is a 14 gauge wire to it, uh, which should be a 15 amp circuit. 
and I'm just going to strip enough of the wire off to slide in underneath the screw. On the back side of a GFI, you're going to have two sides to it. One is going to be marked line, like you see here, and that's your power coming from your breaker panel. And then you have your load side, which is whatever you're plugging into it, or your lights, or whatever, hair dryer, etc. It's important that you get those wires in the right spots, or your GFI is not going to work at all, and nothing downstream of it either. So typically, I put the ground wire in first just for the convenience of it, and it is pretty much always the green screw. There's really no exceptions to that rule, but I'm sure there's one out there somewhere that someone's going to point out. But anyway, put the ground wire, which is the one that doesn't have any um, plastic coating on it, that goes to the green wire. Now, once you have your, uh, you know which ones your power wires are, in this case, I like to twist them a little bit just so the future I know which wires are coming from the breaker panel should I ever have to remove this GFI again. And just slide the white wire to the silver screw. Uh, white wires always go to the silver side and your power wire is going to go to the brass screw or sometimes it's a a dark color anyway um, but typically all outlets your power wire the black one goes to your brass screw and your neutral which is the white goes to the silver so put your power wires in first so that you don't get them mixed up and then you can put the wires that go to your load on next then you can gently feed your wires into the box I like to tuck the ground wire into one of the corners to ensure that it doesn't bend up and uh, short out on anything. And you can then run your screws in just a little bit at a time to kind of work it in there. If you run one all the way in, you'll have a hard time getting the second screw in. So just a little bit on each one will work just fine. Uh, then you can do it and turn your breaker back on and go back in with your tester and see in this case you can see there's a little yellow light on right there that's indicating that we have power but the it is tripped at the moment which all new gfis will do you can see there is no power so there's a reset button you just push that and now you can see that i've got this one wired correctly there's a little test button on the top to ensure that the gfi is working properly and you can take this same tester and connect it to any of the outlets that are downstream of this, if you've got a couple bathrooms tied in, kitchen, whatever, then you can push the button and ensure that those are covered by the GFI as well. Now, I went ahead and marked my panel so that in the future, now I know what goes where, and that's always helpful. If you found this helpful, please hit that subscribe button, hit the likes, leave comments if you will, and or future project ideas, I'd appreciate it. Until next time, thanks for watching.